industrial pollution causes many different toxic problems. Uh, cancer is one of them. And we mentioned this with regard to the developing world, but there's still problems in the developed world as well. It's far from over. Uh, this beluga is on the beach in the St. Lawrence estuary uh, in Canada, the outlet of the U.S. and Can Canadian Great Lakes. Belugas are charismatic animals. There are whale watching tours in the St. Lawrence estuary and the public is enamored with these species, understandably so. So when something goes wrong with them, there, there will be concern and this concern can trigger financial support for increased diagnostic activities and ultimately for health protection. If you learn how to protect belugas in this area, you can certainly help protect other species as well. Now, belugas have a long lifespan. Some of them can live up to around 80 years of age. And they feed in the bottom on benthic fish and invertebrate species. Uh, when they were found on the beach, one of the individuals who got most involved was Daniel Martineau, a professor at the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Montreal. And uh, he's a toxicologic pathologist. And he found a lot of belugas that were dying and many of them had cancer. And he published his diagnostic findings and he went on to follow up with the contaminant residues and found adducts of carcinogens to DNA. He published this in good journals and he also provided information when magazines or television stations would come to him of what he was finding. And little by little, he built up some very compelling relationships between exposures and impacts. Here we see one of the belugas that's being examined at post-mortem in the University of Montreal. And the graph at the upper left shows belugas and the high cancer rates that they have, and then humans. And if you look down the way, then there are dogs and cats. But the belugas seem to have the most problems of, of all. Uh, and then you see a, a, an aerial photograph of some aluminum smelters. And there's huge waterfalls, and they drive electric generation systems in that area. And this gives rise to power that is used to convert aluminum ore into aluminum. But in the process, they burn these electrodes. They were burning these electrodes and putting out all of these polyaromatic hydrocarbons, these carcinogens, and they were coming down in the estuary. And they are hydrophobic, and so they get into the sediments where the belugas are feeding. And then you see uh, in the lower right one of the digestive tract cancers of one of the affected animals. This was a big problem. So Dr. Martineau and his colleagues found that 27% of the adult belugas had cancer, making it the leading cause of death in that population and also the highest rate of cancer found in any wild mammal species. But they also took note of the high cancer rates in the local human population. And as I mentioned, he talked to the media and uh, in addition to his journal articles, and after some bad public relations stories, and perhaps this contributed to the fact that uh, major aluminum companies in the area changed to a new and cleaner technology. Uh, this happened recently, and it was a national success story in a way, getting this pollution stopped. It was applauded by the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. A number of universities around the world have been wise enough to have invested in faculty that can help protect the people and the animals of their region against uh, toxic contaminants. The University of Turku in Finland is one, and they've studied a great many different species, as noted here, and, and not just intact animals, but cell cultures and, and other in vitro work as well. Um, they have uh, published on uh, these different problems. And if you look at their reports, you'll see that they found that metal smel smelter workers had a lot of cancers in the nose and the lung and the stomach. 
and they also noted that near the smelters, birds had problems years before the people, and they suffered from direct toxicity and also from damage to their food webs, so they didn't have enough to eat. And the pied flycatchers were one of the species that had severe breeding and eggshell problems, but they did have a remarkable cleanup in the area. And after a 99% decrease in emissions of metal dust from the smelters, the fly, the pied flycatchers are back and, and they're doing much better. Um, unfortunately, oftentimes the effects of air pollution on wild birds and even other species are, are just not studied. So the impacts are there, the, the species are in trouble, but the diagnostic work is is not necessarily done. The follow-up research work is not necessarily done in a timely way. And so these are really our career opportunities for the right people.